What's up guys? Welcome back to another video on all hardware. Uh, this video we're going to be looking at how to use shift registers. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught my last video, but my last video uh, I did basically kind of a 101. It was one of our back to basics uh, videos on D latches was what it was. And that was kind of the prequel to uh, this little lesson right here. Um, on how to use shift registers. Because what a shift register is, is a shift reg register, excuse me, can't even talk, is actually a big combination of D latches, is what it is, that are all cascaded together um, for you to be able to control. Today, the type of shift register we're gonna be using is this guy right here. It is the 74HC595 chip. The D is just the uh, package code. <laughs> But anyway, basically what it consists of, I actually have a data sheet that I looked up. This is what it consists of. It looks just like, well, or at least very similar to what I showed in my last video. And if you haven't checked that video out, please uh, take some time, go check that out. It probably makes uh, this one a little bit easier to catch on to. Instead of uh, all D latches, it has um, one D latch looks like right here, but a lot of them are SR latches which are set reset latches basically the same thing i mean more or less um they're pretty much the same exact thing but what it is is you've got one stage okay of your primary latches you know and just like in that video as you're rolling your serial data through and here's your clock see there's the clock you're going to take that clock line and pulse it up and down uh to roll your data in the data is going to roll into these now th normally most people, if they're doing a serial to parallel out, you don't want your outputs to change around as as your data is rolling in. Okay, so as your data is rolling in, you don't want your outputs to be rolling in uh, usually because you're using it to expand, you know, your I/O or something. Well, in our case, we do want to do that, but basically, what will prevent that is this latch clock. Is what they call it. They call this, uh, or at least the latch registers, the latching registers, what they call it, and that's the R clock or the latch clock, depending on what manufacturer data sheet you're looking at. That's what this controls is basically the clock here. So normally you put your normal SR clocking uh, signal on here and then you put your serial line, so your 8-bit you know, your eight bit number you put on because this is an 8-bit um, latch. You put your 8-bit number on here and then as this, with every rising edge, in fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is positively edge done, with every uh, rising edge of the clock, it's going to move that data into all these all these shift registers. Well, this latch being out here, the, this set of latches, that's just a straight connection that's, that's basically like a buffer in between. In fact, there's a tri-state buffer right here, so it's actually kind of like double buffered here. <laughs> Um, going in here, the way it's in here like this, it, it allows it to um, this guy, these guys, to roll all the data in and nothing to change out here. So it, it won't change out here while this data is rolling in, while while this guy has a low edge, as you can see on the R clock. While he has a low edge, if you hold this guy at zero while you're rolling this in, you won't get any change out here on your data output. Then if you give uh, this R clock a pulse, you know, you give it a rising edge, um, it will then shift simultaneously. Um, since all these, all these output latches clocks are all tied together, it will simultaneously move the output data on the primary stage latches to the output. And then there's also, it looks like they even have an output enable pin that comes over here. This is a tri-state buffer. Um, and basically what they do is the minute you put a, put a, Let's see, what is that? Put a low, is that what they're doing? No, they're putting, a, it's basically a high by the time it comes through this, this not gate in here. But basically you put a high on this and it'll, this little buffer acts kind of like this. It'll shift it, shift its uh, input to the out is how it works. So anyway, so that's basically how these things work, exactly the way I drew it in that past video, uh, more or less. Um, of course, there's different uh, little features and stuff. There's an output bubble. There's also, uh, what are they doing here? Um, They've also got 
and SR, oh, they got a clear that can come in here that, um, let's see, where's that guy at? Clear comes in here. Oh, that goes to the reset, and that's what the set reset, and what I'm talking about that is, that's the, they got a clear line that comes in here that you can basically clear this guy out at any moment, um, basically flush the data, initialize it all to zero, and so on and so forth. That stuff we'll probably not use, and I'll show you guys how to tie that off. So, But basically, that's, that's essentially what's inside one of those 595 chips. And like I said, uh, I think I go into more detail uh, on, of course, that's been a while since I made that video, on one of my other videos that's uh, Serial to Parallel, I think is the video called or something like that, Serial to Parallel um, Output, and that basically shows you how to control this with a microcontroller. So anyway, I'm going to close that and get that out of the way. Um, we're going to look at our circuit here. So what we got going on is we've got that Serial Clear uh, SCL, that Serial Clear line. It's uh, uh, active low enabled, we're just pulling that to a high. So that way it the, the, it's never in clear, it's always in you know go essentially. Because if you, if you were to ground that down, you'd never see anything out here, it'd always be in clear. So it'd always be clearing everything to zero, so you don't want to do that. So we're pulling that high. Same with this G, that's the output enable pin. And it's active, active low, so we want to ground it down. We want to activate it because we want to have the output uh, enabled, have the output out here uh, available for us. And then what I did was we'll go over here, and I've got two different timers, our good old LM555 timers. And if you haven't seen the first hardware video, that's basically the video I did describing these uh, LM555, so I'm not going to go into a whole ton of detail on this circuit um, because I just des I described that in uh, quite a bit of detail uh, a couple videos ago. So anyway, basically what I've done is I've made a resistor combo that will select a uh, certain frequency range. Um, I can't remember what, what frequency I ended up choosing. I think it was something like 30... Wait no, this top one. This top one's the the signal that is going to be our serial signal. So it was actually, I think it was fairly, fairly low. I think it was like twenty. I want to say twenty, fifteen or twenty hertz, or, or maybe twelve. I think it was twelve to fifteen hertz is what this all calculates out to. And like I said, you can go back in that one video and see how the resistor combo uh, calculates out the. Uh, well, it's actually these two resistors and this capacitor actually calculate out the timing for it. But basically, we're getting we're getting around I don't know 12 to 20 uh, hertz uh, frequency coming out of here. Now, what I had to do, what reason this is here is I went ahead and drew this in because it's what I use, it's what I had on hand. I needed to invert that. The way that this setup um, is with the resistors I had available to me at this time, I really need to spend the money and just get a giant resistor kit where I have all the decades of resistors, but unfortunately I don't have that. So uh, with the resistors that I had, this was the best combo for what I was wanting to, what frequency I was wanting to get out of there. The best combo I could deal with. Well, the problem was um, the duty cycle was basically like inverted. And so it was actually on more than it should have been. It was on uh, a higher percentage of on time versus the off time. So I had to flip that over and make it where it was on a short period of time and off for a long period of time. So to do that, I just made an inverter. If I'd have had a 7404 uh, chip where I could have just added an inverter, I would have, but all I had was a NAND chip laying around. And you'll see that in the demo movie. So what I did, you can actually take a NAND chip and turn it into an inverter very simply by taking the A input or number one input and pulling it to a high then basically number two, uh, it'll invert whatever you put on the B input or number two pin. Um, the output will be what the inversion of whatever you put in there. So that basically flips that signal over for me. And then feed that into our, our uh, shift register. Then I come down here and I build our clocking signal. Okay, So I build our clocking signal here. And that guy is around, uh, it's close to 40. Hertz. I think it's you know, so around 30 some, but I think it's you know what it actually turned out to be because I think I can't remember. I think I have I think these are like 10% resistors. Like I said, it's just stuff that I have laying around, so it kind of works out to be you know kind of who knows. You know, it's in the ballpark of 40 hertz was what I was going for for this guy, and so it's just a nice clean 50% uh, duty cycle um, clocking signal coming out of there. At uh, like I said, at about. Oh, at about yeah, yeah, 40 hertz or so. So anyway, that comes out of here. And what I've done with that is since I want my output to change, okay, um, grab my hand tool. 
since I want these outputs to actually change as it's clocking in this uh, PWM signal that's coming in here, I want to clock not only the, the shift clock, but I want to clock also that latch clock, that second stage clock. I want to sync those up and clock them at the, with the same signal. So that's why these two are tied together, is so that they clock at the same rate. That way the output will change with the input. As the input's being clocked in to the primary stage, it's also being outputted. So that way we get this cool effect where it'll start at LED 8 and it'll just... The, the LEDs will just they'll light up in sequence going this way and it'll make this cool looking kind of like wavy look is what I'm calling it. Um, it's what it looks like. And then of course we've got our power um, and our decoupling capacitors on each one of the ICs. This IC as well as our, our 74, uh, 7400 IC that we got here. That's all, that's all this little blurb is, is that. And that's basically, in a nutshell, guys, that's basically what it is. So we've got basically two PWM signals going on. One PWM signal that is getting uh, inverted, so that way we've got the correct uh, duty cycle that we want. Uh, and then going in and feeding, that's feeding our serial line. Okay. Then we've got our clocking uh, timer down here, our clocking PWM signal, that's feeding a uh, different frequency that is going in to our clocks and that's what clocks it in and yes the frequencies have to be different if the frequencies on these two are exactly the same um, it, they would just they would just all be on they just be on solid you wouldn't get that choppiness you know where they kind of like cascade and they blink and kind of looks like they're moving you don't get that movement um, you need to chop it up and have some delay between each one and so to do that you'll run this one uh, your serial signal at a slower frequency than your clock and then that way you'll have some off time in there. And that's what my problem was up here when I had to put the inverter is that actually due to the duty cycle, um, it was actually on, it was on like, oh, I don't know, it was on like, oh, I'd say probably 80% of the time it was on and 20% it was off. <laughs> so I needed to invert that and make it where it was on 20% of the time and off 80% of the time. So that way you would get that wavy look because as the clock is clocking, you know, maybe it, inside that frequency, it would, you know, there'd be maybe three or four clockings of zeros in between the clockings of ones. So that way you get that choppiness. And we'll look at this on the scope uh, here in just a second. I'll put it together and we'll get to see it. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll, I'm going to stop the camera here and we're going to switch around and we'll take a look at it on the scope and on the bench. What's up guys? Okay, now we're at the uh, we got at the bench here. So, we're going to look over here and uh, let's see, let's get some power going. Uh, some power going. Now, what we've got, I don't know if I can if I can zoom in here. Uh, um, I'm not real sure. Okay, well, I'll zoom in a little bit there. All right, let me get something to point with. Okay, so we've got, basically, we've got our two timers. These are our two different stage timers here. So there's the two LM555s. Then we've also got, there, there's our AND gate. The only thing I had was one of the big 14-pin uh, uh, AND gate. Excuse me if I'm sniffling a bunch. I, my allergies are getting to me this time of year. So anyway, uh, we got our our uh, 7400 chip so our NAND gate which I'm using again like I said as an inverter so and then we've got our sandwiched underneath all the resistors for all the LEDs we've got our uh, 74HC595 shift register so serial to parallel shift register so anyway like I said we got all of our uh, all of our LEDs hooked up so those are all the current shunt resistors for the LEDs and there's all the LEDs okay so then we've got, here's our, our uh, AND gate here, and this is our uh, pull-up resistor on pin 1 for, uh, for uh, to turn it into an inverter, basically. Then we've got our primary stage, or our serial stage, I guess you'd say, um, our serial uh, PWM wave. So there's the resistor divider right there. Uh, there's uh, one of the little kind of decoupling capacitors. And then what I had is I, I didn't have a 0.5 microfarad capacitor. So what I did, I had two one microfarad capacitors, so I just made one. Capacitors, um, those of you that don't know this, um, capacitors, if you put them in, they are the opposite of resistors. If you put them in series, 
it's like resistors in parallel. If you put them in series, then you can basically uh, do the, oh, what is that, C1 times C2 divided by C1 plus C2, essentially is what you've got, and so on and so forth. So essentially, since they're both the exact same, they're both one, you put two in series, it divides it in two, and it makes it a half. So that's how I'm getting the half, and that's why there's two capacitors. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking this camera something fierce. But there's two capacitors. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be shaking it. I got my. I think I got my other arm resting on it here. So anyway, you've got uh, the two capacitors in series is what you've got going on. So that's what that is. Uh, let's see, is there anything? There's. Uh, these are all just decoupling caps uh, here for all the different ICs. Same thing going on over here. Um, and basically, again, I didn't have. You see two resistors here. I didn't have 50 ohms. Uh, I got some that are sort of close, but I don't know, I kind of wanted to be a little closer than what they were. And so um, what I did was I took 200K uh, res resistors and put them in parallel to get me 50K. So that's how I got my 50K. So, you know, you, you work with what you got, right? You know, if you don't have everything, that's kind of half the fun of, of coming up with this stuff, is if you don't have the exact value that you need, well, then you got to come up with how you're going to make it, right? So it's half the battle, half the fun. So anyway... So that's basically our two stage. That's uh, that's our secondary. That's second stage. This one's the um, basically the clocking frequency is what this guy is. So let me back up so we have a little more room. Okay, back up so we have a little more room. Hopefully I don't knock the camera over again. I really need to invest in the camera tripod thing here. Anyway, um, so now that we got this, I'm going to go ahead and we'll probably put oh maybe in this region here or something. We'll put the scope trace. Okay, so there we go, there's the scope trace, and now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power. All right, and there it is, it is off and going. There's our good old uh, waveform over, over there, and we got what looks like, um, like I said, kind of like waves that are going on. It's kind of like a wavy thing. I don't know, maybe I can, maybe I can pick it up. Ooh, be careful, see? That way it's not just blasting into the camera. Okay, and that's basically, and there you have it, okay? It's pretty cool, pretty straightforward, and that is, uh, this is working with all hardware. There is no, there is no software, as you can see, I did not uh, do, write any code, there's no microcontroller or nothing, this is just strictly hardware. Oh my gosh, look at the, look at this, look at the waveform. Oh, look at that, when I, t when I tilt it. Did you guys see that? Oh my gosh, look at that when I touch it. Oh my goodness, talk about distortion. Woohoo! Well, that's fun. Oh, isn't it? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun with, with oscilloscope. It's late at night, and I'm, I'm having too much fun. Anyway, guys, before this movie gets really, really long, uh, uh, that's basically how you do it. That's a simple uh, hardware implementation to make basically some simple Christmas lights, I guess you could say. So, fun stuff. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. And guys, um, oh, check out uh, check out the new forum. Uh, if anybody has, I'm going to try to see if I can't maybe make some posts. It uh, looks like I've had a few people that come by and maybe looked at it, but that's basically all they did. So um, I may make some posts in the general comments, just kind of some news and things that are going, because there are some interesting things happening in the news, at least electronics news, I guess you would say, here recently. So I may post uh, a few ch few things in there, kind of get the ball rolling, get everybody uh, to start communicating, talking with each other. So if you have, and that is a best uh, greatest place to have to ask questions you can always ask questions here on the uh, on the channel here or uh, on this video in the comment section below um, you can always post questions I'll respond to them as much as I can but what I'm coming up with is if you visit the new forum which I'll have a link in the description below uh, if you visit the new forum uh, if I can't answer your questions maybe maybe one of you guys you uh, other guys that are uh, that always watch my videos and whatnot uh, maybe you guys could answer it for them you know if I if I get tied up and can't get around to, to answering questions uh, post there and I kind of wanted to build kind of a community where we can all get together and just kind of talk and collaborate and if we have any questions or anything we can all just kind of share amongst ourselves so please check that out that's the magic smoke dot pro boards dot com um and with that guys i think that ought to do it take care and we'll see you next time